building is really hard in The Sims. Honestly, in like any sandbox game, I mean, Planet Zoo, I'm looking at you, but like many of us here play The Sims 4 and we want to be good at building and we're just not. I mean, I'm extremely talented, but <laughs> I'm sorry. It took me like a long time of building every single day in The Sims to get semi okay at it. But back in the olden days, I used to watch a ton of speed builds, build tutorials, all that on YouTube to try and like figure it out. I mean, I first found Sims YouTube because I googled a tutorial like how to build in The Sims 3 and then I was like, wait, people make speed builds of The Sims? And I got so excited and I just became obsessed with Sims YouTube and now look at me. <laughs> but I also know a lot of you guys use my speed builds as kind of like tutorials to try and copy my houses, especially my poor dear console players who don't have the gallery yet. You poor, poor souls. I'm so glad you're getting it. If you didn't know, by the way, it's kind of old news now, but gallery is coming to console. Cross platform too, so my friends, you can finally download builds from like your favorite Sims YouTubers. And I get asked all the time, like, Kayla, how do you build this? Can you give me a build tutorial? And I've got a few build tutorials on my channel, but today we're gonna sit back and we're gonna build like a basic looking family house in The Sims together. I'm gonna take you step by step and show you how to do it. I built this house really fast to show you guys. It took me like 20 minutes, but the, the whole exterior took like five minutes. It was the floor plan that was rough, but I figured it out. It's a four bedroom, three bathroom house, so it's pretty decent size. You can fit a bunch of sims here. It's got a little porch in the back, a nice backyard, uh, some random bricks on the wall. <laughs> but I'm gonna show you guys like basically a rundown of how this house is built. You can kind of see right now quickly how I built it. I did a speed build of it. It's not furnished obviously so it isn't that exciting but I think the hardest part of building in the sims is the floor plan for one but also like the exterior right because we all know how to decorate a sims bedroom. I mean that's not difficult. Well Sometimes it is, but <laughs> you know what I mean. You just put some bathroom stuff in and you're fine, but it's like the outside making it look like a real house can sometimes be rough. And so we're gonna talk about that today. The house isn't even that cute. It's kind of simple, but I know it can be hard to build these sort of things. So we're gonna talk. <laughs> What's Lil Simsy's thought process? How does she go about these things? What exactly is she doing? You know, so like, but also, I didn't even think about this, and I feel like a big dummy for not doing it. I know that a lot of people want to have like a grid image of the build so that you can easily copy it. And I personally rebuild houses from The Sims 3 all the time and bring them to The Sims 4. And I take all these grid screenshots so I can copy it easily. I've never given you guys that in a build tutorial. So, <laughs> my friends, I'm terribly sorry. Here is a grid image of this floor. You can screenshot it, you can use it. This is what you need to, to copy. You can see how many tiles it is this way. I'm really sorry for not doing that in the past. I didn't even think about that. Here's this angle as well of the first floor. The upstairs, here you go. Take your screenshots. And then this angle also, in case you're curious. Okay, so <laughs> we're ready. We've got our angles, we've got our screenshots. Is it time to bulldoze this and do it again? Quick house tour though. Here's my thought process, right? This is gonna be a small dining table space. We got a living room on the right side over here. The left side will have the kitchen. There's a bathroom downstairs, a bedroom downstairs, maybe like for grandma or a guest room or your, you know, your teen who wants their own space. And then upstairs, there's three bedrooms. I'm picturing like the hall bath, a kid's room on the left, another kid's room over here, the master in the middle, cause it's got an ensuite. Kind of a weird layout, I think, to have the master like in between two kids' rooms, but at least it's got an ensuite bathroom, okay? <laughs> and look at this little feature. We've got a nice double ceiling over the stairs. Ooh, wow, <laughs> exciting. So I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, it's time. <laughs> Goodbye, my dear friend. <laughs> so when I'm building a house, I always start off with, as I've told you a million times, a fancy box, <laughs> which I kind of will adjust and change as I build the house. But like the center of every house is a rectangle, sort of. And then you kind of add like, you know, bump outs here and there and, and use those. But obviously our house will also begin as a fancy box. <laughs> but if you're gonna build along with me, we have to make this a little bit smaller to make it actually fit how it's gonna be. Cause I built this box and then I was like, okay, make it a bunch smaller as I was kind of adjusting the rest of the house. Ended up being kind of a small fancy box in the beginning. Ours is actually gonna be kind of like a square. Gotta be nine by eight. So it's not quite a, quite a square, but it's close. <laughs> and then we're gonna add another bump out on the other side. We'll add one more bump out on the right side of it. That's gonna be a smaller one. <laughs> <laughs> it's five tiles wide and you can see I left like one tile on either side of it So that's gonna be a six by five and the house is done. <laughs> I'm just kidding Usually I wing this a lot more than I'm doing right now But I'm kind of trying to break it down very detailed so it's easy to follow But this we're gonna put a little four by three box in the front there And then I'm gonna put a floor piece for some sort of little balcony front porch thing right there That's gonna be five by two so you'll see the spacing that I'm doing by this, the spacing of this is really based on what kind of windows and doors I wanna put. I know that I personally, using just the base game, 
like the three tile wide front doors a lot so I want to have a three tile wide front door here so I've left space to fit one nicely like I think that door looks great and it fits there perfect so that's good I want to have the living room on the right side here so this is kind of a good size living space also I can put a nice fireplace right there so I'm kind of in my head thinking now okay like where are the windows gonna be because let's be honest the front of the house like the windows make or break it you know <laughs> we're gonna put two windows right here in the front of the build there and then we're gonna put a smaller cuter little window with shutters on the on the left side there and now the house is done <laughs> I'm just kidding but you can see that I kind of have shaped it and based the sizing like of this box on this window I literally when I built this it used to be three tiles wide like that to fit a three tile wide window and then I was like you know what that's ugly and so I changed it <laughs> so it would fit a, a two like a shutter window that's just two tiles wide I always build my houses with just the front first and then I come back and do the back so what I would have done when I built this I would have put the second, oh boy, I put the second floor on, covered that whole first fancy box with the second floor. But then this part, we're just gonna put it two tiles out instead of three. We want like this flat piece here for a roof. So you have like a two by four box in the front there. But that's how I built it originally. I just did this and then I did the roofs and then I was like, okay, let's figure out the back <laughs> at the end. Because the front matters more than the back. I don't even put windows on the sides of the house until I'm done because I like to put the windows on the side based on where the floor plan is. Because it sort of matters how the front looks, but like the side, you can just make those look better inside of the rooms. Like if you know that you're gonna have a, a bathroom right here, maybe you wanna put a window on this tile just so it looks nice in the room it might not look good from the outside but like think about real houses how often do they look nice from the outside like most of the time the sides of your house the back even looks terrible from the outside the front might be okay but like the sides you got windows all over the place it looks like this sometimes in real life it's terrible once you get into this and you start looking closely at real houses you're gonna be horrified they're so weird looking anyway we're gonna add our, our box onto the back now we'll do the back we'll like space it out here we're gonna have a four by three box here as well so it's symmetrical with the front it kind of makes this layer look a bit like a cake <laughs> we got like a three-tiered cake going on i mean seriously look at this but it's okay it looks good from the from the floor plan and from the outside so it's fine and then we're gonna have kind of a wraparound porch here so i'm gonna put my little tiling down my little floor pieces you see i've got it like this i just put two of them made them four by three but we actually want to have it all be too wide so you can scoot them back so it kind of like wraps around the side with just two tiles does that make sense am i making sense I don't know how to explain things. This is harder than I thought, but that's the whole shape. Okay, and then upstairs, we're gonna have the same four by three box right there. And last but not least, to finish off the shell of the house, we're gonna put a little shell box for a fireplace. I'm gonna put a two by two in the middle of the right side there just up against the wall. It kind of like adds some vertical interest. <laughs> and then on the third floor, you're gonna copy it and do the same thing. And then while you're at it, you can go to the fourth floor and put a little tiny half wall box on top of it so it looks like this the shell's kind of weird but once you put a roof on it looks fine i swear <laughs> i'm also gonna put a little foundation to it so it kind of has some height i like to do it with just like too high but you could probably do three if you want this way it just looks a little bit better off the ground you know oh the windows dang it okay so in the back here and on the second floor my goodness i forgot about this okay so the back you're gonna put the same windows that you did in the front of the living room and the back of the living room and this gets a little bit weird before we have the floor plan in so i'll have to <laughs> justify myself here but I put a two tile wide back door and I put it right there because the stairs are gonna be in this area so we've got a little back door right there that takes you out to the patio we're gonna take the same window from the front and put it back here there aren't gonna be any windows here but on the upstairs you're gonna put a nice three tile wide beautiful little bay window <laughs> and then you're gonna copy this window and put it upstairs as well so it looks kind of odd right now but again once we do the roofing it'll be fine <laughs> it's okay I swear we're gonna get the bigger bay window and put it up here I'm also using white shutters I'm sorry I had black ones on these windows but we're gonna use the white shutters because this stupid window doesn't have them look it's got brown ones and the black swatch looks like that terrible where's my window swatch update <laughs> We got all the door swatches, but where's my window swatches? <laughs> okay, but that is the whole shell. We're gonna add windows to the side once we put the floor plan in. But what you're gonna want to do next is actually delete some of the walls on the inside because these are not in the right place from our boxes. If you press B, you'll get the wall tool and you can hold control and redraw over them to delete them while you're drawing them. Very useful. Instead of just like using a sledgehammer to delete them because that's really annoying and tedious. If you just, again, hold, if you hold control while you draw it, it deletes it. Very, very helpful. I get asked that question all the time, but it's just control and then redrawing the wall. I don't know how that works on console. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't play console sims. Look how dumb it looks from the outside right now. Oh, wait, my window. Sorry, one more of those right there. It's better now. 
<laughs> I'm gonna put some like random lights in so I can see to do the floor plan more easily so it helps you guys like visualize. You don't need to do this, we're gonna delete those later, but just to make it brighter inside for the floor plan because I, I think it helps you guys be able to see what I'm doing. It's time. This is where it gets tricky. <laughs> we're gonna start off with the stairs. I always do the stairs first because I think it kind of helps like break up the space. It makes everything make more sense when you're placing them. So we're just gonna use some like random brown stairs. Wooden stairs are useful and I'm gonna do a little curve of them and put them right here. <laughs> So they're kind of like in the front of the house when you walk in. I'm also gonna put a wall next to it and then another wall on the right side of the living room when you're facing it like this because that way it kind of breaks it up a little bit and also it makes this part look better from the upstairs. I swear, it's gonna look nice. <laughs> this house is a pretty open floor plan downstairs so we don't need to put any more walls over here but we are gonna have a bedroom. So we're gonna go two tiles down from here and then just draw it across. That's our bedroom and then if you make another like four by two box like that, four by three box like that, sorry. <laughs> That's gonna be the bathroom, but I actually did a little bump out thingy in it to make it look a little bit more interesting because I figured it was kind of boring looking otherwise. But you don't have to do that. You could just leave it straight if you wanted. But I put a little bump out. So to do that, I just drew a little box and then deleted that wall. And that's the whole downstairs floor plan. This will be the kitchen. We got a dining space here, a living space here, and then a bedroom and a bathroom. And then once you get upstairs, we're gonna try and fit three more bedrooms up here. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna delete the wall for the chimney because we're gonna use that in our bathroom. Apparently the bathroom is in the chimney and that's totally fine. Realism, stupid and for losers. We want bathrooms. <laughs> So you're gonna draw two walls down and then make a little box. It's essentially like a three by three, but it's got a little cutout next to the chimney. Next room is gonna just come straight down from the middle of the chimney and then over to the edge of where that little like bay window wall is. And then we're actually just gonna finish off this wall for this like big long rectangle because that's where the rooms are gonna get cut out. We'll put a four by three at the front of the house. That'll be a bathroom. And then you can kind of like draw a wall in the middle of the build. That makes two more bedrooms. I'm gonna make them like kind of a fancy box looking thing. Um, I'm gonna put a little bump out there because then the master is bigger than the kid's bedroom because this middle one's the master bedroom. But you could just leave it straight if you wanted to. I mean, it doesn't matter. And that's the whole floor plan. So quick, like if you want an overview of the grid again so you can see, <laughs> that's what I've been do doing here. Obviously you're gonna wanna put lights in these rooms. I like this little ceiling lamp. I think it's very realistic and pretty and not ugly and it's bright and it's a, it's a good lamp, but you can put whatever you want. I don't care. I'm not gonna help you furnish this house. That's your problem. <laughs> I usually put one in every single room that's like closed off, but as far as the rooms here, once you furnish it, you might wanna change them around because sometimes it's nice to like have the ceiling light centered over the dining room table or something. So like say you put a table, I don't know, right here. You want the light to be above it but depends where you put stuff. Same thing, I usually put the light like above the coffee table in the living room, so depends where you put the living room coffee table, but kind of centered in that room is nice too. And suddenly we have just one dining room table. <laughs> I put some random furniture down to show you guys how I might lay out this space, but I'd have the kitchen kind of like this, obviously dining table and living room kind of like this. That's sort of how I envisioned it being furnished. Obviously, like do whatever you want. I mean, it's your house. <laughs> also, I wouldn't choose this particular color scheme with the woods in here. Um, this is horrible. Don't do this. <laughs> okay, the doors. I forgot about that. You can use whatever doors. I kind of want to use two wide doors because I don't like how these end up being centered. I hate having doors like in the corner of rooms like that, but you could just put the one wide doors and have them be kind of cute like this. Same thing upstairs. Stick them around kind of like that. One in the bathroom, but it's up to you how you want to do it. You could also use like a, a two wide, I don't know, like this bad boy or something. <laughs> But this all depends how you want to furnish the house, so that one's on you. Sometimes when I'm building things and I haven't laid out any furniture yet, I just put down tile in the bathrooms as kind of like a reminder like, hey, this will be a bathroom, even in the kitchen sometimes. And then I'll put carpet in the bedrooms as like a, hey, this will be a bedroom reminder so that when I'm furnishing, I remember. <laughs> I always remember anyway, but like just in case. And then like some wood flooring in the rest of the rooms. <laughs> just, you know, it, it helps you lay it out in your head. We'll put some wood flooring on the decks as well. But there you go, that's the whole house. You can put windows in this side of the house, however you might want to do it. I wouldn't put windows back here. I think it's kind of nice to have like the fireplace have its own wall. Sometimes I might put like fancy ones there, who knows. It could be kind of pretty, but it's up to you. On this side though, the bedroom doesn't have any windows in it, so you might wanna, you might wanna put some in there. Sometimes it helps to put the bed on first. Like if you want the bed to be right here, you could put windows on either side of it or something. Over the nightstands, oh, cute. <laughs> it won't be centered with the roof very well, but like, you know, it happens. <laughs> It's fine, but who cares about the side of the house? Like it, you don't see it. You can just put some trees and then no one cares. But the roof is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna show you guys how I would do this. Honestly, I'd do the roof first. Like I build the shell and then the roof immediately, but I think the roof is the most difficult part. And it's kind of funny to look at the bald shell. So <laughs> the bald shell. <laughs> 
let's postpone even more. <laughs> I love this base game wallpaper. I think it's so pretty. It's this pretty gray siding. It fits with everything. It'll look nice in your build, but you can see there's some kind of annoying parts like right here where it won't by default put the corner because with The Sims 4, you can't auto place it which is infuriating. <laughs> so when that happens, sometimes I put columns like around the entire build. I did that in the one that I showed you guys earlier, but we don't have to today. Like it looks fine this way. This part's a little bit annoying, but most of the spaces have them. So it looks all right, I guess. This first thing we're gonna do is actually put some like fake floors above these areas. So you can always just press build ceiling that'll cover that space nicely. Same thing in the back, you can click on the, the room <laughs> of the deck and then build a ceiling. And then you can figure out where the roof needs to go on that. Right here, I personally would put brick, obviously, because it's a fireplace. <laughs> and then I'd probably change the half wall trim, like the top of it, to be white, because then it'll match the rest of the trim on the house. And then if you're feeling fancy, you could put some brick as the foundation to kind of tie it all together. Okay, I'm postponing, let's roof. <laughs> I always roof the biggest part of the house first. So you can see, remember that original box that we had? That nine by eight box that we've got right here? We're gonna put the roof on that part first. That's why I like that box method because it kind of gives you an idea of how to roof the house. I'm also gonna make it a lot lower, probably like about right there. It doesn't really matter. It depends how you want it to look and what you think looks nice, but I think I'll do that. And then we're gonna use this piece and just duplicate it. We'll press the copy button. So we kind of have the same height throughout cause then it'll look nicer. I think it's kind of weird when you have like super tall roofs mixed with the shorter ones. It's fine when they're all like, different direction facing but like if you have a tall one right here and then maybe I don't know a shorter one here I think that looks super weird so <laughs> I like to make sure they're all the same um, if they're in the same direction it's a picky thing for me but just keep the angles the same okay you'll want to paint the sides of those by the way I sometimes forget to do that so make sure you paint the sides of the roofing same gale roof on the right side over here this one's important that you make it the same because look see how weird it looks when like this one's tall and that one's not doesn't it just look off I mean, well, this looks terrible anyway, but <laughs> I think you get my point. Also, something weird's going on here with these pieces. So when that happens and like this thing looks kind of out of place, you can take that same simple siding, but without the edge and then just put it right there and then it'll look a little bit nicer. Since we're gonna have a little bump out, we're gonna have an open bit in the flooring here. So we're gonna do that part right now because the roof is gonna really mess with it. So you're just gonna draw the little part that you wanna have the bump out in. You can already see our roof is like, <laughs> causing it some huge problems. So you're gonna wanna make sure it's smaller and lined up and lined up exactly with the wall. And to do that, you'll see I didn't, it has a little overhang and we like it on the left side, but on the right side it's clipping. So if you hold shift and then drag this little bit in, it only drags that side in and then it won't like clip at all because think that was ugly, wasn't it? See? But then we keep the overhang over here. So just hold shift and then drag that bit. If you just, if you don't hold shift, it does them both at the same time and you don't want that. It also broke our stairs. I have to put them back. Hang on. <laughs> I'm just going to do it outside because it won't like say the roof's in the way. <laughs> All right, there we go. We're back. And then you can delete the floor just with a sledgehammer. And look, it's a nice little overhang. How cute. Okay. <laughs> That's gonna be annoying, but we'll get to that in a second. Next, we're gonna put some half gable roofs in the front. You might need to have move objects on to do this, by the way. That's bb.moveobjects on because otherwise it kind of clips with like windows and stuff and it'll delete them. But then you can just lower this down so it kind of lines up with the bottom of the window. And I don't really like how it overhangs on the side there, but you could always keep it and drag it back when that happens. I like to make sure it drags into a wall. But I think what I'm gonna do is uh, do the like shift thing and, and remove the sides there. So that it lines up perfectly with the edge. And then I'm just gonna steal this, duplicate it, and put it underneath the other window in the front. I think that looks cute. <laughs> just paint the sides so we don't forget. Okay, now to the back. This, again, is where it gets complicated. You can use that same roof from the front and drag it all the way back. But this, like, little curvy boy <laughs> is gonna be really annoying, especially with this clipping that we have here. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a half-hipped roof, it's this fourth one on the menu, and you're gonna put it in the corner of that little front bit there. You can drag it so it kind of lines up, but take it so it's just one tile off from the edge. We're gonna have a lot of roof pieces here, so bear with me. And then make it a lot smaller. Just lower it down to what you think looks nice. You can always adjust it later, but we basically just want that corner bit, that line in the corner lining up with where the little white siding piece is. <laughs> Does that make sense? I can't explain things well. And then we're gonna just use half gabled roofs for the rest of it because it'll be flat on the edges. You can even take the ones from the front if you want. You can put it directly in the back there. You can take it again, rotate it so it covers the other edge. Oh boy, that looks horrible. <laughs> but you see how bad this looks right here? You're gonna wanna take it and drag it back. All you need is for that roof piece to be in the corner, essentially. And then same thing, you want it on the front piece there. 
I hope that I'm explaining this well. <laughs> I feel like I'm not. And then usually I like to have a little overhang on all of these, so I'm gonna drag that piece out. And then look, a roof. So this is actually four pieces. There's a half gabled roof right here, a half hipped roof right here, a half gabled roof that's the other way facing this way, <laughs> and then one more half gabled roof facing this way. So I just copied the two from the front. The ones that are on like the back of the house facing the back, those are copied from the front. I just rotated one and put it there. So I hope that makes sense. But that's how you do the roofing back there for that like curved it's not curved. It's a little wrap around kind of porch, okay? <laughs> but all that is spaced out, so now you can put columns in. Whatever you choose. I like to use these because they're kind of cheap. Little Annesley square columns. I put them on all the corners, and then I like to have them line up with where the walls are, so I'll put one right there so it lines up with that wall on the inside. And then you can just stick some sort of fencing. I like to use this one. Contrast wooden fencing is my favorite one because it's kind of cheap and it looks nice. And you can just cover all the edges with it. You can put stairs wherever. I like to do them sometimes like lined up with things. Maybe here because it's like directly across from the front door. The side here can look nice sometimes. I mean, totally up to you because you might have like a, a patio right here. <gasps> That's kind of cute. Wait, oh my god. Tutorial. <laughs> We're gonna have a, a little paved patio here. I'm just gonna fill in that whole space, going from the edge of the house back to the edge of this front bit of the porch and we're gonna pave that. Then when you put your fence in, you can just use like the cheapest fence. You'll line it up with that edge of the paved patio. You can just take it however far back as you want it. I don't know how big you want your backyard to be. I always like to bring it a little bit off to the side because I don't like to line it up with the edge of the porch because doesn't that look kind of weird how it lines up there? It's also floating for some reason. That's really odd. Okay, <laughs> it's fine that this floats because they have little supports in it, but that doesn't have any supports, so it looks super weird. But yeah, I like to bring it out a little bit and have a kind of a bit of a side yard over here. You can make it however long you want, but I like to push it like to there. Sometimes you might want to line it up with the other side. Who knows? Up to you. How big do you want your backyard to be? How much fence can you afford? I mean, these are all important questions. <laughs> but then you can put like a hot tub here or like some tables, and it makes sense to have like a bit of a paved area in your patio. That could also be a good spot to have like a fence if you wanted to have a gate there or something, who knows, but fun. Do the same thing with the little railing in the front porch and then also the, the columns. I'll put one in the corner, but then I like to have columns on either side of the door purely because we're gonna have a staircase right there. And I think it looks nicer when you have them like next to the staircase. Cause then when you put railings, it like goes into the, isn't that nice? Oh, beautiful. So we're getting there. The house is almost done. The hardest part is this back roof, I think. So I'm sorry for making you do that. <laughs> we'll pick a roof color next. I like these basic fairly weathered farm shingles. Cause they kind of seem like your everyday average shingle. So I'm gonna use those, but you can use whatever you want. I also, we have to use the last roof trim, the beveled out roof trim, because the rest of them, like this one, this is gonna clip on the inside of our house. Look how dumb that looks. <laughs> so we use the last one on all the roof pieces, and then it won't clip anywhere. Now the house is basically done. If you want to, you could put some brick down here. I think it's kind of fun to have little brick accents, but I think I might keep the whole house siding because it's just simpler this way. But the, the final touch is actually gonna be the chimney. I'm gonna delete the ceiling right here, paint the inside of it, and then I'm gonna grab a chimney piece. Maybe just this one. It'll place and it'll be like too low, but if you press the nine key, or you might have to use control nine, depending if you got a camera set for it, just, just press control nine, okay? <laughs> you can raise it up a little bit so it fits in there. That only works with BB.move objects on, but it looks pretty cute. That's kind of a weird looking chimney, isn't it? Maybe not that piece. <laughs> Let's pick a different one. Oh, fun. I sized this one up, the tall concrete chimney with cap. I, I placed it in there and then I just pressed the right bracket key and sized it up and it looks kind of nice. Okay, hacks. But you could pick anyone that you want to use. And then the build is done. I mean, you could obviously have to furnish it. Maybe stick like a little railing on the stairs so that you don't fall off and die. <laughs> These things are important, I guess. But I like this house. I think it's really cute. <gasps> Pretty trees. I put a few plants down on the right side. This might look complicated, but I swear it's not. I just put this tree and then I sized up these pale yellow flowers. And then I put a few of these. I sized one of them down. Like this is a very simple landscaping. I might do the exact same thing on this side. We'll put a little bush back there. <laughs> size up some pale yellow flowers. The sizing up of things, guys, that's number one key to tricking people into thinking you're good at landscaping and that you have a lot of landscaping in your build. Size stuff up, be a liar. <laughs> it fills up so much more space this way. And then these things, I like to raise them up like one because if they float a little bit more, it fills up a little bit more space. And then you like put a smaller one next to it. It looks kind of cute. Stick a flamingo down, <laughs> maybe a bird bath. That'll fill up some space. And there you have very simple landscaping with Lil Simsy. <laughs> Obviously some terrain paint is your friend. Put some dirt underneath them, you know? Mailbox. 
Did they steal it? Oh no. There you go, right at the end of the street. Cute! <laughs> And that's the house. I hope that was at least somewhat helpful to you. I'll put this shell on the gallery if you want to furnish it. I might delete my furniture. Hang on. No one needs to see this bad stuff. Maybe I'll leave the fireplace for good measure. <laughs> Thank you for watching. This is kind of a weird video for me, but you know what? I had fun. I am an educator. <laughs> I'm sorry. But please make sure to leave a like and comment and subscribe and do all those fun YouTube things. And in case you guys didn't know, I post new videos every single day. And so I will see you all tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, everybody. It's not a blue suburban, okay? It's a generic gray suburban. It's different.